as I desperately strutted my stuff, I wondered how I got here. Is this really how life can be when there's no one around to take solid photos of you? I guess it's DIY season. Hey guys, what's up? It's the Jussie Shaw here, back with nothing. And it is photography related. Yes, no more hair videos for a while, yes. I am in my gym gear, ready to go to the gym later on. Got my messy bun. It's been a while since I actually took photos, edited photos, because I've been busy with quite a few things. I've been on set for a film as an extra and I have been getting next to no sleep, working night shifts, the whole shebang. So I'm back. It's gonna be really amazing just getting my hands on my laptop, just working on some stuff. So today I'm gonna to be working on a photo I took a few months ago for uni. I'm currently doing an MA, as some of you might know or don't know, and this photo is a test shot. So I just thought, you know what, let me go ahead and edit it. So today I'm just gonna kind of walk you through my editing process and show you the different softwares I use and show you my thought process as I edit a photo that isn't really saying much at the moment. I usually shoot on film, but this time I shot digitally because I haven't quite figured out how to use a film camera in a studio and with, you know, the lighting and whatnot. So I've used a digital camera, but I am going to try to achieve that filmic look. So I hope... Yeah. How to film the screen on the Mac. Come on! I'm gonna show you the process of me shooting everything. So enjoy this montage of me not quite understanding how to use photography gear, despite calling myself a photographer. As long as you have the eye, I'm good. And so, I pulled myself out of bed that morning and headed to the studio. Sporting on a wash and go, I picked up my hair, hoping to form some sort of shape, whilst maybe placing a bit too much focus on the shapes I was cutting with my derriere. I mustered all of the upper body strength I could find, and I pulled down the white backdrop. This is a silver tasseled dress from Pretty Little Thing, and oh, look at it go, it's so pretty. What I'm doing now is I'm placing a gel onto the pro photo light. Oh, I guess I didn't like it, so I went on to add some pink. Let's see what happens with that. On to finishing touches. So I'm gonna go in and add some random bits of plastic into my hair. I'm gonna do my makeup in the most budget way you have ever seen makeup done. And yeah, just gonna crack on with my shoot, really. And so after working my stuff for a few moments more, I went ahead and concluded my shoot. Oh no, wait, we're, we're still, okay, we're still moving, okay. Um, apologies. There we go. Now on to the editing. So I'm going to start with Lightroom and I'm going to correct the lens profile to correct any perspective issues and then I'm going to go ahead and crop the image to a 5x4 ratio to mimic the dimensions of medium format film and also so it fits perfectly on my Instagram page because you know that's where it's going and I'm then going to use a clone brush to get rid of any spots and blemishes. So I've decided to go for a black and white image and I'll show you why a bit later. So in the meantime, I'm going to edit the brightness, contrast, highlights and shadows, clarity, you name it. <laughs> and what's really cool about Lightroom is it has a slider-like format when it comes to its controls, which is really cool when you want to make those slight adjustments and you want to do those extreme adjustments. I'm adjusting the exposure, I'm bringing the highlights all the way down and I'm also increasing the clarity to show some more detail in my image. 
And then I'm gonna go ahead and use the S curve to mess around with the highlights and the shadows a bit more. And you can actually adjust the S curve right on the curve or you can use the sliders right below it, completely up to you. Now since I made this a black and white image, I can't necessarily use the HSL panel. And HSL is basically the hue, saturation and luminance. And this panel has now turned into something called the black and white mix, which will allow me to make certain colours within the photo darker or lighter. So for example, I've increased the orange to bring my skin back to its original tone. So because I'm going for a vintage black exploitation vibe, I'm going to be approaching this as though I'm colourising colorizing the word uh, <laughs> as though I'm colorizing an old black and white photo using the split tone tool and I'm going to color in my shadows to mimic my skin tone and for the highlights I'll pick a color that nicely complements this And so this is what I've come up with. And I'm gonna go ahead and further adjust the highlights, shadows, darkness, and lightness settings, you know. So as you can see, I am doing the absolute most and I, I don't know how to move on, unfortunately, but when you're ready, go ahead and move on to Photoshop and let's get this going. Ooh here we are in Photoshop. So this is what's gonna happen. We are gonna be very organized and we're gonna create folders for each and every element we use. Yes, we are gonna do that. So I'm gonna create my first folder called Sparkle. So let me explain this Sparkle to you. I'm going to be using a brush I downloaded from somewhere, somewhere on the web. And I'm going to be using it to achieve that soft glam 70s lens flare effect around areas that are typically glowy and shiny. So my dress, my hand, I guess, uh, my, am I wearing any jewelry? I don't know. But yeah, anywhere that's shiny. And I'm rotating the brush and changing its size as I go along so it doesn't look like an Instagram filter. Yeah, we don't like that. <laughs> the shadow I have behind me so I'm gonna further emphasize that by creating a new background layer and I'm gonna use the burn tool to color it in. I'm gonna let it burn, let it burn when the feeling ain't saving your body. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Moving on swiftly. So whilst I'm on Photoshop I'm going to mess around with the color balance a bit as well as the levels, which will help me to further experiment with the tonal range of the image. And rather than applying these settings straight onto the image, I'm adding adjustment layers, and this way I'm gonna be able to hide any adjustments I've made very easily. Okay, so I'm gonna add a, I think it's Gaussian? Gaussian. Gaussian? Gaussian. Gaussian. Blur to the layer with the exaggerated shadows. And this will help me to further add on to that soft glam effect. And to add on to it even further, I'm going to add a white radial gradient. And I'm gonna bring down its opacity just slightly so we don't overdo it. And I guess this video is done. So I really hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something. And I'm happy to take on any comments as well. If there's something you spotted that I could work on, do let me know because I'm all about showing and sharing the learning process with you guys. I still have a long way to go and it's super exciting knowing that there's a lot more I can work on and add to my arsenal of photography knowledge. So yeah, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Peace. All right, okay, I see you. You stuck around, yeah? Cool. Might as well enjoy these outtakes while you're here.